All right, good morning, guys. Everyone join in. Oh, the sun is right in my eyes this morning. How are we all doing? So good morning, guys. I hope you're all doing well. Send me a little thumbs up and let me know you can hear me all right. We should be all good. That sun is going to be right in my face today. I won't put my glasses on. I'd like to see you guys. Right, so who's on board? Can you see who's in? Give me some waves, guys, where we sign in from. Good morning. Good morning. All right, so first things first, let's just get a bit of context for today's session. So we're going to have a look at some vertical pushing progressions. And so in terms of our handstand work and our handstand shoulder strength work, if we're going to start to progress some of this stuff forwards, building a vertical pushing pattern is going to be super, super important for us. Generally, a lot of people struggle with handstand progressions and doing some of the more interesting and uh, exciting progressions because they just don't have overhead strength. Now, in a weight training environment, we might have done quite a bit of pressing work, dumbbells, barbells, that kind of stuff. When it comes to bodyweight training, there's one movement which is kind of where we're going to build a lot of our vertical pushing patterns from, and that is a pipe push-up. When we've nailed those down, we're then thinking about going towards our um, wall handstand push-up progressions. And a lot of the stuff that I'm going to show you can be multiplied out across or progressed through into wall handstands um, as well in terms of changing the difficulty of the exercise. So the plan for this morning, we're going to go through a little bit of prep work just to get you guys warmed up if you want to follow along. We're going to, there's going to be some parts where it's going to be like get on board and you can do it at the same time. There's some other parts of the session which are going to be a little bit more like helping you to find your level and understanding where to go next. So I want to help you to actually get through into some more, uh, develop your understanding of, of your next progression and how you're going to move your shoulder strength or vertical pushing strength along this kind of continuum so that you've got absolute monster strength up head, up overhead, which means you can start to do some cool stuff um, with your calisthenics, just generally looking after your shoulders as well. So I hope that sounds like a good plan. So we're gonna go back, we're gonna find our middle point, we're gonna go back and find our regressions, and we're gonna push forward and find some progressions. So stay for the duration, guys, because even if you are gonna find that we are going down to like level one for your progressions, you just, or regressions, you're just getting started out with Think about vertical pushing strength and bodyweight training. Let's get that nailed down, but understand some of the different things that you can do to progress it. And these are what we talk about as our locker. These are the different tools that we've got which we can play around with. So if that all sounds all right, we're ready to start to build an absolute pair of boulders for shoulders. Um, let's get into a little bit of prep work. I've got some kit that I'm going to use today. So again, you're going to be able to sort of see how that kind of fits in. Um, but if you haven't got it, don't worry. It's no big stress. As things progress and you start to improve your training or you start to move your training forward, you can start to make some small investments, which are just going to help you to build this overhead pushing strength. So pipe push-up progressions, regressions, and some fun to play around with. I put on my Twitter this morning. This is a shoulders and triceps session. If we're thinking about a traditional bro split from bodybuilding days, we would do a little bit of the, we would break this down, shoulders and tries. So that's going to be the focus. So I'm going to show you some tricep stuff as well today. Because ultimately, in a pressing position, this guy here on the back, massive muscle in comparison, it's actually probably twice the size of bicep, but lots of people spend time here and a lot of people spend time um, getting some tricep work. This guy here on the back, the tricep, or both had work is going to work triceps but we can isolate them a little bit as well so with all that said let's get into a little bit of our morning movement preparation and we're going to start with a kneeling lat stretch and i hope to get a little bit of range overhead so youtube you get to angle down for a couple of minutes instagram you're going to be good right so you guys can follow this one along if you want to we're going to start off on our knees i want you guys to take your left hand and you're going to put it knuckles down on the floor across the body in front of you Lean forward on your knees, so your knees are sort of directly below the hips, and you take your right hand, plant it on top. From this position, then you're going to rotate, so over to the left hand side, if you brought your left hand across the body, and then you're going to sit backwards and, and just hang out into that stretch, basically anchoring your hand down. What well, the purpose of this, guys, if we're going to go into overhead pushing positions, I want a little bit of range overhead. And this is a real easy lap stretch you can do without any equipment. Just have a shuffle around, Try and find that which is stretched, which is uh, where you're tight. Give a little bit of rotation. Hang out in there for a sec. If you can't feel it, you're going to have to move your feet back a little bit. So sometimes people sit in the inbox, I can't feel anything stretching. Get that angle, that position, and move your knees back, and then sit yourself on towards your heels. And if you can't feel it, just keep shuffling your feet back, and eventually you'll get a nice little stretch coming down this portion 
to the body. All right, so let's switch over and go to the other side. So right hand comes across, left hand goes on top, rotate to the right, and then sit down onto your heels. And just let that just hang out for a bit. Breathe through it, guys. Don't hold your breath. Don't try and tear muscle from bone. Just like sit into it. A little gentle mobility rotations in and out. Feel where it's loose or tight, sorry. Try and get a little bit of range. And we're going to hang here for a second more. Nice. All right, so just a near easy way to start to get us thinking about getting our shoulders a little bit more um, loose and a bit more range overhead. All right, next up, we're going to go for a scat push-up. Now, a little bit of education piece on this one. The serratus is you normally look like five fingers as they come around here, and its job is to help to protract and rotate the scapula upwards. So as the shoulder goes into overhead position, the this, this serratus anterior here is going to help to pull the shoulder blade around. And that's important because as you go overhead, or the arm goes overhead, what we want to happen is the shoulder blade rotate and lift so that it maintains contact with the bone in, this, in our upper arm here, our humerus. These two structures have to maintain good articulation or contact as they move through different positions. Now, lots of people are weak in the serratus, and when we go into our pipe pushing progressions, we're going to start to think about pushing the shoulder blade or scapula up rather than just pressing the shoulders. It's a small cue, but you'll hopefully feel a difference. So in our scap push-up position, we're just going to get the serratus anterior warmed up a little bit. So we're going to go push-up shape. Nice, stable body position. Don't allow yourself to slump or pipe. And then the movement's dead simple. Shoulders are just going to relax and just let your chest drop to the floor, but arms stay straight. From that shape then, all you're going to do is just push and just try and slide your shoulder blades around your rib cage. And it comes out into this shape. And you go back down and you push back up. So if you're in this with me, guys, let's go through a set of 10. There's two, push up three. The only bit that moves the shoulders, not trying to like round up the bum at all. Four, just hold at the top end range. Five, think about rotating the elbows a bit behind the body as well. Six, seven, eight, nine, one more, ten. So just waking that little serratus anterior musculature up a little bit more. Next one, we're going to go into a cobra. Now we're going to incorporate some overhead pushing patterns and a squeeze down to try and get the shoulder stabilizers activated. So in this pattern, chest on the floor, hands are going to come out up in front and overhead. We're going to let our tummy is going to go super tight, so lock the rib cage down, squeeze a worn up between your butt cheeks, and then we're going to come and squeeze up into this position. But what we need to think about doing is pushing forwards in that shape. So we're not trying to crank back and down, Try and push your shoulders forwards so you're making yourself nice and long. So from here, I'm going to lift up. I'm going to push out. I'm going to hold for three, two, one. Hands stay high. I'm going to squeeze down. And now I can squeeze back and down together. Three, two, one. Hands come down. Slide around the floor. Lift up. Push. Hold three, two, one. Slide around the outside. Three, two, one. Thumbs up in this position. Not rotated inwards, up and out, and around the floor. We're going to go for five, lift up, press, three, two, one, squeeze around, three, two, one. Now I'll just you guys keep going, I'll show you a couple from the side. So from here, I'm going to come up, press, three, two, one, resisting this lift from the back, guys, keep that chest down and bum tight, and then back, and then the last one, sweep around, lift. Push three, two, one, squeeze around, hold, and relax. All right, so done with enough intensity, that should feel like our shoulders are starting to get a little bit of work in them, we're starting to get a bit warm. I'm like dipped off, aren't I? Like in the shadow. I can't see if I do that. Um, <laughs> so we get these are joys of doing lives in a greenhouse effectively. Um, so we're starting to get the shoulders warmed up a little bit and that's going to help us with one, some muscle activation, getting the right synchronization patterns, but also some temperature, which helps us to improve a little bit of force. So let's go through the basics and have a look at our pipe push-up position. It's a real simple shape, but sometimes difficult to get into. So let's go for our middle point. Pipe push-up is going to be our staple. 
and then we're going to sort of play either side of that to get some regression progression going on. So you're going to start off push-up position. Now there's a little bit of difference in this one. Sometimes people find that they do more like a yoga kind of position where they rock backwards onto heels into this down dog, and then it ends up pushing in that shape. Because we're going to prioritize strength, and what I'm ultimately trying to do is stack weight over my hands. So I want to bring my body weight forwards rather than rocking onto my heels. So rather than pushing backwards into down dog, what I want you guys to do is walk your feet up, and then we're going to lean over the hands. It creates this sort of V position where the more weight is stacked up over these guys, which is where I want it. Now my job from this position, stay high if I can, it's a bit of a challenging hamstring flexibility, is I'm gonna make a triangle with my head and my hands as I, as I drop in. So from here, weight over the top, I'm gonna to drop down, head to the floor, push back up and out. In this shape, with any of our pushing patterns, guys, what I want you to think about is keeping elbows here, as opposed to allowing them to go to press and flare out. What happens in this shape is if we drop in, the head of the humerus here just gets thrown into the front of the socket. And it's not an amazing position to be. So if we keep the elbows tied in a bit, it means the shoulders are a bit more packed in, a bit more secure, and it's actually a stronger, safer pushing position and more relevant for where we want to go with our handstand progressions. So let's try a set of these to go, guys. It's tough, so we're going to go for a set four to start off with just to get ourselves into the move. So walk the feet up, hands and head coming forward to make the triangle, elbows going to screw behind the body. We drop down and we push back out. Now the drive out is really important. Lots of people here, when you get to this point, the brain goes, well, yeah, well I'm much stronger if I just do my chest a bit more. So I'll help you out to get out of that position. I'm going to drop in and then you go here, oh, and they push back up. And they go again and they push back up. It becomes very much a more horizontal push rather than vertical. So we've got to think we're moving like we're on a rail. So we go down on one path, we've got to come back out exactly the same way. So as we drop in, head goes down, push backwards. So you're pushing your weight and your hips backwards, driving them back to that start position. Slow down on the control, push back out. One more, push back out. Right, I'm going to pause there and take some questions, guys. Has anybody got anything that we've covered so far where they struggle with um, with pike push-ups? Anybody got anything with a little bit of sort of questions on that one? We're going to go backwards on this one after regressions. Not backwards, it's regressing it through to a slightly easier stage. Any specific questions or areas that people will struggle with at that point? Nothing coming through. All right, good. Everyone's just now like flipping up my shoulders sore. If I've done anything yet, boulders for shoulders. Okay, perfect. Let's move on a little bit then. So let's say, for example, that we're struggling to get the um, get out get out from that bottom position. There's two little things that we can start to play around with. It's just to work on eccentric strength. So we can just do the lowering phase to begin with. That's going to help us to build strength under control. We'll throw an isometric in the bottom, combining two little effective training tools. And then we're going to put our knees down and then reset the rep. So we're only working half the or partial range of movement or part of the range, the complete range. But it's going to help us to build the strength. So in that position, if we're struggling with the pipe push-ups, I can walk my feet through. Same shape, but I'm going to take five seconds to go down. Five, four, three, two, one. One, when you get as low as you feel you can go, just push the floor down hard. Even if you're not moving, just going to go five, four, three, two, one. Knees go down and reset. Even if you're following along with this one, guys, and you've got pipe push-ups in the locker, you feel pretty confident with them, let's throw a set of these eccentrics and isometrics in because they're going to bring benefit for anybody. They're not easy, and it's just slightly different tempo or stimulus, but it's going to blow your shoulders up quite nicely in a positive way. So if you're still working on this as a beginner, let's work through a couple of sets together. Those of you that have got pipe push-ups locked down, let's play around with this as well. Work on those tempos, build a little bit of bonus strength in a slightly new pattern you've probably not trained for a bit. So let's go for a set of four, guys. We're going to go into our pipe push-up position. We're going to drop in. So when you're ready, I'm going to count you through the reps. We're going to go five. Let's go four, three, two, one. Go as low as you can. Then we're going to push hard five, four, three, two, 
one. Then you just go down and just reset yourself. There's one, three to go. Reset, down slowly, five, four, three, two, one. Pause, five, keep pushing, four, three, two, one. Knees down. Good, two to do. Nice and tall over the hands, drop in, five, four, three, two, one. Pause, five, four, three, two, one. Knees down. And then the last one, up. Pipe push up position, hips over, stack to the hands. Let's go down slowly. Five, four, three, two, one. Pause. Five, four, three, two, one. And relax. All right. Eccentrics for the wing, guys. Those are difficult, I think, for most people um, if we don't train them on a regular basis. So, just a couple of questions coming in. Um, so, Mike. Uh, sorry, Mickey Essex, um, how many reps are ideal to do? Depends on what sort of strength you want to build. So if we are thinking about maximal strength training, and if you're in the beginner stages, then we might want to aim for sort of one to five, or let's do that same body weight training, three to five. That's going to help you to build like real neuromuscular force um, creation or, or adaptation. So, but what often happens with pipe push-ups is that if you are, I'm going to move back a little bit so I can actually see. If you are working on a, um, if you're going to do three to five reps, you're working your max strength range anyway. If you can do eight, you're working more towards hypertrophy. So it depends on what you want. If you can do 10 bodyweight pipe push-ups, control them well, you're probably ready to start thinking about moving to the next progression, which we'll go through in a bit. And in that place, you might move to a new progression and only be able to do three to five because of the more the difficulty of the range of movement. So it, it very much depends on what the objective and the goal is. But all of those reps have value. It just depends on what the outcome um, outcome is. Um, cool, Colin shaky. Yeah, no, I felt a bit shaky this morning. Um, is it important that your head always lowers in front of where your hands are placed, even if your legs are elevated at nine degrees? We try to do that. The reason being that if I go out, yeah, let's kind of throw this in some movement concepts, right? It's not wrong if it's pain-free. You can do it that way. We're just going to find that for most people with the progression where they're going, we want to try and keep that triangle because when the triangle's in that position, when we have that position in the triangle, the shoulders are going to be probably screwed back in a little bit. If we were to drop into here, it's not bad if you can do it without pain, but if your head is in line with your hands, then what's happening is we're just getting this kind of a like real shift position where we are. The head of the humerus is just going bang straight into the front of the socket. By creeping the elbows back, we keep the shoulder in a smoother position for, 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 um, for pressing. So it's not bad, but we normally teach it elbows in rather than elbows out because just to protect the shoulder a little bit. Um, bush proof, somehow that regression seems harder than the previous one to me. Yeah, it is. The eccentrics are difficult because we don't train them. So lots of people ignore tempo. So if we are specific adaptations, then sometimes you've got to play with some different variables, and tempo is one of those. Um, so it's a really useful one, but if you can do eight reps on the bounce and you find tempo hard, train more tempo. You'll 100% build more strength that way. Um, Jack O'Connell, um, should my shoulders be neutral or protracted? So we want to keep them back. We don't want the shoulder jumping forward in that position, so we should be able to maintain the shoulder in a stable position rather than it jumping forwards. Uh, Colin, legs shaking as well as arms at the bottom of the hole reminds me the legs shake really badly when doing elevated pipe push-ups. Yeah, so if we're starting to find that we're getting some, some kinetic change shaking, the brain's just trying to find a pathway, some stability. It's kind of under pressure and stress in some ways. Um, so it's then started to think about, well, can we kind of improve strength and some stability within that? Um, and it could be a number of different things that are, are leading to that. Um, Valerio, difficult to raise arms in a Superman position. I can just do a few from the ground. Yeah, if you're tight and jacked up for your shoulders, lats, pecs, all that sort of stuff, lacking range of movement, then it's going to be difficult in that shape. So your job is to go and invest some more time in improving range of movement. Um, so sweep sheet, uh, some say to protract the scapula when going down. So let's just, I, uh, let's clear that up. So to, the, the scapula protracts and it, uh, it retracts, all right? So it moves, it elevates upwardly, downwardly, um, it can tilt. So in basic terms, when the arm's going overhead, the scapula is gonna protract because that's its job, to come around to keep the shoulder 
and the, or the articulation between the scapula and the humerus together in, 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 in a nice, in, solid um, position. When the elbow comes down, the elbow, or when, so when we put our lower position, the elbow is now moving behind the body. When the arm goes behind the body, the shoulder blade is going to retract. You can't protract the shoulder blade and have the elbow behind the body. It doesn't work. You, you can try it. You can push it back and try and push your scap forward. It won't go anywhere. The scap's job as the elbow comes down is to maintain the articulation in this bottom position. So going overhead, scap comes around. Going back, scap goes behind the body. So to try and protract the shoulder in the position where I'm going from here, I'm protracted, and I start to move down, I can't protract the shoulder blade and go down because the articulation of the joints will work like that. So when you're going down, the shoulder blade will come back into place behind the body. When you go, when you go pushing up, it will come back around again. So play around with that, feel it, and you'll probably make more sense to what I'm saying. Right, Instagram, I'm going to jump on you guys. Let's see what's saying up here. Um, crack, I cannot see a thing today. Like I'm looking for some kind of ship or something. Um, so scaling it back, we're going to have a look at now. Any reason for the pain in the lower scapula? You've probably got some restriction tightness, which you need to have a look at. Could be some tension around pecs or lats. Um, it's not, uh, not working so well. Um, is hip flexibility an issue? Yes, hamstrings and hips are going to play a role in this potentially. Um, if we go, I like the eccentrics. I can do full reps, but I think training eccentrics and bottom pause is more to build some strength. Definitely. Elbows with fat tightness. So if you get into that position, the elbow can't stay there, probably lacking some range of movement around the shoulder. So it just wants to dive or find a different way of doing it. Pipe push ups, should the feet be close together or hip width? Play around with it. You can do either. Close they are together, less stability you're going to have. One other movement I want to show you is just upon the band. So I've got a band suspended here. These are nice movements. You can hook yourself in into the band. So I'm going to pull the band down and I'm going to pop it around the waist. From here, it's just going to give me a little bit of support on the hips. Now, I don't encourage people to rely on these, but it's a really useful progression to build with the eccentrics and the isometrics because you get to feel the full range of movement and you can learn the movement pattern. So same thing, pipe push up on the top. I can drop in, but from here, the band is just going to help me to get back out at that difficult bottom position. And it makes give me a good opportunity to feel, just hit myself in the bad face, to feel that pattern when I move through. So there's a nice little option there for you to have a little play around with. The other one, if you really want to go back and you want to play around with something like different, is to grab a set of parallettes. All we're doing here, we can still practice the movement, but if you think about in calisthenics, we're constantly looking to try and leverage or to manipulate levers and angles. So by elevating the hands, I'm bringing my torso higher up off the ground, which means the amount of weight stacked over my hip, over my shoulders, is less. So if I show you here, from a position, how much weight I've got stacked over, if I keep my feet in the same place, but bring the hands into the bars, okay, I've now got relatively to be less weight. But it's just if I was to want to try in the same way, by elevating the hands higher, change the body angle and makes them a little bit easier. So that's also a really nice little progression there for you to play around with if you want to, to change the intensity of your pipe push-ups, build the strength up, and then we can start looking at the progressions, all right? So there's a few little nice, easy beginner's progressions to play around with your pipe push-up progressions. Um, I'm gonna go through the, the uh, sorry, regressions. I'm gonna go through the progressions now, and then I'm gonna show you just a couple of like, talk about a couple of reps and sets that we can use as beginner and then advanced strategies. So, the first one, I'm going to bring a trusty, sturdy dining room table chair into here. Instagram, can you see my dining room table chair? Uh, I think you can. All right, so, do you know what? Guys, I'm going to bring you Instagram because last time, my phone was in the sun and overheated. So you guys can come in here for a bit. All right, so, can you see me all right? Oh, crikey, the sun is killing me today. Um, I'm going to trust that that's going to be all right. So, if we put a chair, we can then think about elevating our uh, little set change. We can then think about elevating our feet a little bit as a progression. So again, what I'm trying to do is get more weight stacked up over my hands. 
So in this shape, I can put my feet up onto a chair and I can now get into a really vertical position, right? This is where I'm going to want to be in a, in a handstand push-up. Same principles apply. Down, make that triangle, push back up and high. Then you drop in, down, push back up and high. You can do the same thing in these. Five, four, three, two, one. Hold, five, four, three, two, one. Drive back out. All right. The same principles of building strength are going to apply regardless of the progressions that we use. Now, there's one other that I want to show you in this, and it's quite similar to the, um, it's actually included in that, in that isometric rep that I just did. And we call these like um, dead pauses or a dead start. If you want to go to frog to handstand, so I want to start in a frog position and be strong enough to push out into my handstand progressions, I need to be able to move from nothing to something. In this position, I've got no, no momentum to use. So I can mimic that with my pipe push-up progressions by coming through, and even if I'm doing sort of more um, sequential reps or concentric reps, I'm gonna drop in, pause, take the weight out of it, and then now I can just gotta work on, bang, creating that force hard from a dead pause. It's not an isometric, in that I'm not pushing the floor, I'm pretty relaxed here, but then I'm gonna work on that Boom, can I get that vertical push and press working for me? All right, so I'm gonna move you guys up a touch. So, next one we're gonna have a little play around with. Instagram's a roller coaster today. So, with feet elevated, our next one we can work on is we can elevate the hands. Now, this comes to a point where we've got to start thinking about the feet relative to the hand position. If I elevate the feet on here and then elevate the hands, I've changed the amount of range of movement I'm going to work through and the load over my shoulders. So just as we did before, if you see now, there's relatively less weight stacked over the shoulders than there is if I'm on the floor. However, the benefit of having some parallettes or something is that I can move through a greater range of movement. If we were in the gym, military pressing the barbell, we wouldn't be happy with reps that only finish here, which is effectively what we're doing in a pipe push-up. We're only working through this range of movement. I ultimately want to be able to move shoulders from overhead, fully flexed, through to here, chest, and then press back out. So I need to start thinking about how I'm going to elevate my hands so that I can go and play in this range from head to shoulders. So the parallax do that for me. Feet can go up. And then now when I drop in, I've got a lecture, a little bit of range, and now I'm having to work through a deeper pattern. Again, if you want to, you can use bands for this, but we have to put it into the context of earning the right to progress. If we're needing bands for these exercises, we probably have got some lots of progressions that we can do beforehand to make sure that we're working within strength ranges of at least three to five reps when we start to play around with these kind of progressions. All right, one more on this. Just to make the point, I'm going to spin this around. Taking there, there. Bring in the bigger ones. Because if I was to ask a question if we were live now and I said, what would the bigger parallels do? You would say to me that they're going to increase the route range of movement. My bum is going to go off the screen on this one. Let me give you a little bit of height. I don't want you to miss my bottom, right? So, something to put the feet on, something to put the hands on. And I set myself up, I'm going to be way too close. From here, I can put my feet up onto the chair. I can then create that stacked shape that I'm looking for. I can drop in, and now thumbs to chest, pretty much in that bottom shape. And I'm going to push from here, I'm going to drive back out on that vertical, so drop in, high position, stack, push, and go through. Maybe not the ideal setup for today in terms of keeping that body angle, because we want to make sure that we're staying vertical in those patterns, but it gives you the idea of what happens when we elevate the feet and we can then elevate the hands on the parallels to start to create this L position, which is where we've got the hips over the shoulders, and then we can work through the extra range of movement that I get. So rather than working here on the floor with the parallettes, I'm able to go here 
And if I was to spin that around, I'm now effectively in the bottom of where I'll be in a shoulder press. So this is really where we want to get to with our vertical pushing work. And it takes some time. People find the shoulder development or shoulder strength development hard and slow. Um, it's not always something people have done a lot of, of work in the past. But you just got to work through these progressions to get a nice little um, continued adaptation. Now, for those of you out there that are looking for something exciting, and this may be exciting if I fall off the chair, I'm going to show you one of my favorite progressions. Of where do we go once? We've got a load of strength in our um, parallel versions, our feet elevated. What happens next before or in, in um, combination with wall handstand progressions, which we're not going to run through today because there's so much of this in here. Just to put this into context, if I'm training wall handstand push-up progressions, I'll do those as my target work, but then the pipe push-up is still a massive part of my accessory work, even though they're difficult lifts. So I'm still going to be doing lots of volume, lots of strength work in pipe push-ups because they are nearly less demanding and physically, in terms of stress on joints and that sort of stuff, um, easier than a handstand push-up progressions. And it enables me just to get volume in the program. It's a really, really effective way of just getting reps in the bank and just building that base level strength. Whereas my handstand wall push-ups are more like targeted specific strength. All right. But I love this little progression using the rings. If you've got a set. So we're going to drop the ring down to the same kind of height as where our parallettes were going to be. And all that's happening now is that the rings are going to provide me with a little bit of instability. So not only then do I get to train through increased range of movement, but I now have to control some stability in the shoulder. I've never done them this way around before, so this is going to be super exciting. Oh, let's take a risk, All right? Live on Instagram and YouTube. So feet are going to go up. I'm going to get my balance. I'm going to stack my shoulders. I'm now controlling this range of movement here from the, and the stability in the shoulders. I'm going to drop in through range, trying to keep that position. I'm hitting the, store, the doors and drive back out. My elbows run out of space against the uh, patio doors. I'll tell you what. Here we go. Family's out at the moment. So feet are going to go up. Let's keep this one a better rep. Get stay. We can see already I'm a little bit more cautious in this position. I've got to work a bit harder. I can drop through, keep the thumbs facing forwards, full range of movement, and then squeeze under control, pressing back to the start. A really nice little progression if you've earned the opportunity to go and play in those shapes. All right, so question time, and I'm gonna finish you guys off with a little bit of how we put these sets and reps together. So Instagram, I'm gonna pop you just up here for a second. Uh, all right, uh, let's go Instagram first. Paul, um, do I find a metal parallel tight? I'm just allowing the, um, the hand to rest on it, so I don't really worry too much about those. Uh, James, glad that's helpful. Um, I can do 10 proper um, side down push ups, but not able to do a handstand till now. It's been years I'm practicing that. Yeah, you gotta keep practice, it puts a lot of time and the effort. Yes, um, Zahida, you can use definitely use yoga blocks. You can use books, you can use bricks. It doesn't really matter. Anything which you can elevate your hand on is going to be um, is going to be useful. Uh, where can you get a bands in the international shipping? It's coming. We're waiting. Corona's got us locked down. Sorry about that. Um, what mount have you got for my rings, Dr. Chris Brown? I've got a pull-up bar. Can you guys see that? YouTube, you might not be able to see it, just up there behind my sail blinds. So I've just got an indoor mounted pull-up bar, which is flipping brilliant for the summer and winter. I use it all the time. I think my biceps work hard on pipe push-ups. Yeah, you're going to find that potentially we're going to do some more work in those. It's stabilizing. It's not really doing a huge amount of work because it's not concentrically working. But it's eccentrically loaded, so it's going to do something. So it's not unusual to feel a little bit of that. Uh, so sweep sheet, can you explain the full scapular movement overhead press versus pipe push-ups? And what the cues we should be focusing on for each of the movement, military press versus handstand push ups. Um, we did a long uh, YouTube video on this a while back, um, so probably just go and check out some of the content. We've really got time to go into the detail of that today, so I want to show you a couple more progressions. But check out the YouTube, and there's a ton of information in our virtual classroom around the coaching cues for some of these movements. Right, last one then. So we can work, as I mentioned before, about the importance of triceps. So I'm going to show you triceps, and then I'm going to talk about some loading strategies 
I'll take any last questions and then we will wrap it for today. So two exercises we can do, one of them on the floor, one of them if you've got a set of rings. If you join me for my frog stand, or no, shoulder stand or, or forearm stand workout last week, I think it was last week, that you'll have seen this movement already. But we're going to go for an impossible push-up. Stronger our triceps, the more effective support they're going to be in terms of getting pressing strength overhead. So for our pipe push-up, oh, sorry, our press-up position, we're going to go into forearms. You can then play around with the shape. Further forward is way more difficult. Staying over base is going to be a little bit easier. And coming back out here, so you've kind of further away from your hands is going to be even easier still. And can you just press out and push into that position? All right? If it feels easy, you can move your hands a little bit. And can you press straight up? We're really only working here a little bit of elbow extension, core integration, and some stability. So it's a really nice little isolated movement we could stick in at the end of a session to build some um, some uh, some tricep strength, and they are going to be a massive help, particularly in frog to handstands. When we work through a range here, frog to handstand, the shoulder's not got a lot to do really to get moving. Triceps going to do a lot of work, so the more tricep work we can put in, the better. I've been talking a lot. If those of you want to follow along, let's get a set of eight in the bank of these, a little bit of tricep finisher. So find a position that works for you. We're going to start off in our forearm position, stable through the midsection, and we'll go for the first one, press, go. One, then control it all the way back down. Try not to fall to the ground. Two, control it. Three, control that low phase. Four, eccentric is going to build a ton of strength and muscle. Five, press, six. Tricep should be working. Seven, one more, eight. Nice, a little bit of tricep extension work. And then the other one, if you've got a set of rings, suspension trainer, something similar, then we can do a nice little bit of a ring exercise as well. This is kind of similar, you know, if you're doing bodybuilding or a little bit of strength work, YouTube, come up a little bit. Uh, this would be like called a school crusher with a easy bar or something similar like dumbbells. All that's going to happen is we're going to start with the, the hands out in front and then I'm just going to dip down underneath. So hands are now going behind the head and then pressing back out, just like a school crusher. So we'll go through, push out. If you've got a set of rings and you want to jump on these, we'll go through a set of eight to finish and then we'll talk about some loading strategies and then we are home and dry. So hands go out. Drop through, press one, back under, two, under control, three, let that end range again, control on the way down, so you force these, I think, like the set eccentric here, five, six, seven, last one, eight. All right, and there we have it. So let's just talk a little bit around Shoulder loading strategies. Instagram, I want you up here. Got you. Perfect. All right, so there's a little bit of um, there's some progression. Let's just review where we've been. We did some movement prep to try and get the shoulders loaded up or warmed up, get some range of movement, start to play in these kind of positions and shapes. And then we started to look at some scapular um, activation or some, some serrated anterior, more specifically, activation to get the shoulder blade moving to help these positions. Just a point on that, if we struggle with range of movement or we're tight, restricted around the shoulders, we're always gonna have a hard time in vertical pressing. That doesn't matter if it's barbells or whether we're um, struggling with body weight movements. We need to improve range of movement and then we have the opportunity to move well. Right? So invest time and effort in that. It's massively, massively important. We then looked at our central pipe push-up position, the stable kind of middle point, and then the number of, of regressions leading into that. So if, we can, if we're struggling with that stable midpoint of a pipe push-up, eight reps, let's say, we can then start to work through some regressions where we can go, let's just focus on eccentric and then let's just do some isometrics in there. Or we might use the band to help us to feel that shape and that pattern. If you want to progress it through, make it more difficult, we can start thinking about elevating the hands so we can work through a greater range of movement. We can elevate the feet so we get more weight stacked up over the shoulders, or we can then combine feet and hands. And if we get that, if that starts to feel easy and we're playing with different angles and body heights and shapes, ranges of movement, we might then want to think about doing the same thing and introducing some instability. 
You could, if you wanted to, start doing some ring stuff before that, if you wanted to train some more stability. Increasing stability in the shoulders is going to help strength development, but you can start to just play around with these things and fit them into the program as you feel is appropriate and is what is going to be safe and effective for the level of strength and control that you've got. So play around with those, experiment with them, have some fun with them. We then talked about the importance of triceps and shoulder strength, and we can start looking at just finishes, some tricep work towards the end, um, these impossible push-ups or some ring triceps, two really easy, nice um, tricep-based exercises, which will start to get you to feel a little bit more strength development in the back of your arms. So loading strategies is the last thing I want to talk about. If you are struggling to hit a set of eight pipe push-ups, we can use a cluster set. And these are really effective ways to start to break sets, to break bigger sets down to smaller con components. <clears throat> so if say I can't do eight, what I might choose to do is I'm gonna work through four to start off with. So I'm gonna break my set down to smaller sets. So I'm gonna go through my set here, set myself up. I'm gonna work through one, I've got it two, three is difficult, four is like, crikey, that's my last rep. I'm gonna push, 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 push. I'm gonna take a rest, all right? I'm gonna take 10 seconds and I'm gonna do another two reps. Drop back in, that's number five, and then number six. Take a rest, because I can't get any more out. I'm gonna drop back in. Last one, seven, and then eight. So I've hit the target reps of eight. Now you get a little bonus with this one. Because we've allowed ourselves a 10 second rest, we might actually have enough energy to put an extra rep in. So I now feel, do you know what? I've got one more, I'm gonna go for it. Press it back out, there's nine. So on an eight rep set, eight would have been too hard for me to do by itself. Wouldn't have been able to achieve it, but by breaking them down, I've actually then gone and got myself an extra rep. So I've now put nine reps in the bank, decent intensity, just by breaking the set up. So those are really nice little progressions in terms of playing around with some loading, which is gonna help your strength development. The last one I want to talk about was using a pre-exhaust. Now this is tricky because it depends, you understand why you want to use it. But there's an interesting option there of going, if I, like, if I really want to focus on strength development in the shoulders, I might want to knock the triceps out a little bit. So for me, my triceps are fairly good. They contribute a lot to my pushing strength. So if I really want to focus on strength development, I might use a pre-exhaust strategy on triceps, which will mean that I'll do a set of impossible push-ups that we did before, before I do my main working shoulder set. And the reason for that being is I want to create some fatigue in the triceps so that they can't assist as much in the shoulders, which means I, I take out some of the contribution from triceps and let the shoulders do the prior, the lion's share of the work. So if you are, uh, if you've got good tricep pushing strength, or you're looking for some way to really target and isolate vertical pushing strength, I would play around with a pre-exhaust. Um, it's, it's, it's harder than you think it's going to be. If I take my triceps out of the movement all of a sudden, the shoulder pressing work uh, becomes more challenging. So that is the end of what I wanted to go through today. We've been on 45 minutes today. It's a good one. Um, so let me just have a look at these last little bits of uh, some questions to come through. Uh, Dominic, well, it's how much harder than it looks. Uh, yeah, which movement are you talking about, Dominic? Uh, after you work for your planche on Monday, can you still work shoulders on Tuesday? Depends on recovery and fatigue. Planche is going to take a lot out of your shoulders, a lot of strength work in the chest, and also neurologically, it's difficult from a neural perspective. Um, so it all depends on how well you feel. If you can train planche on a Monday and then do some capacity work for your shoulders on a Tuesday, if it feels good and you can do it, then oh, I'm gonna fall over. Um, then you can do it. If it feels like you get into your shoulder work session, you just smoked, then I would can that off. Um, and I just think it's uh, you've got to let, allow yourself the body. Body has to have a chance to to recover because if it doesn't recover, you don't you don't actually manage to allow it to actually create adaptation. So your plan training is creating stress. You should have some recovery. The body really adapts to that stress and gets you stronger, and therefore you come back to a better in a better place for the following session. So. It's not how much you can do, it's whether you can recover from it. And you're only going to know that by sort of playing around with it. Uh, Colin Britt, is ever a range of movement must come first for me. Yeah, mate, you know, you're well entrenched in that journey, you do really well. Just seem to be doing these exercises and not anything else apart from a run. Thank you, the birds. Too. Yeah, I know the birds are, are out. I'm thinking, bring a bit like scorch after this. I'm going to put some after sun on. Um, right, YouTube, you're a legend. I'm just going to finish off some Instagram questions. Um, what are the scaps doing during the pipe push-up? Uh, we talked about that today already, so just go back and watch the live uh, from the beginning because it's a nice little deep, detailed explanation about that. Um, 
So you can now, so uh, Taishi, you can now manage three sets of eight tricep dips on parallel bars. Good. What's the next progression on this exercise without just adding weight? Play around with tempo. Try and do eight, but like four seconds on the way down. Um, and then do three sets of those. And then tell me how your triceps feel after that. Play around with tempo. And if you haven't, if you, if, if tempo is, if you've not got that, if tempo is like, feels like you're not interesting or you want to do something different, um, Korean dips, Russian dips, something like that. Joe, go for a slightly different dip uh, regression. But I, I guarantee working through range of movement and tempo through range of movement, put some pauses in or just absolutely level you. Um, I still get shocked every time I do that with things, with basic movements like pull ups, push ups, and pike, pikes. Uh, Paul, do ring dips help if your ultimate goal is handstand push or stick with pipe push ups? Great question. If you're in our handstand to, or frog stand to handstand program, people that are doing it will notice there's a lot of strength work in there and it's just general capacity. And ring dips are in there partly because it's a it's a quite a safe position. We can get a lot of work done in, the, in ring dips or bar or, or parallel bar dips because of where the shoulder is going to sit. Um, and what we're interested in effectively is improving just general capacity of the, of the body to work, and particularly in those dip positions in the triceps. So 100% tricep dips, are, or dips, I'm calling tricep dips, dips are going to be an important part of just building that strength. Um, if you've done a load of strength work, you're not really making progress in your front to handstand, I'd be starting to hit some more tricep to isolate and targeted work. Um, well, so we've got really high content, James. Thank you. I'm glad it's helpful. Um, Gary, I'm glad it's great workout and really interesting too. Good. I'm glad it helped. Uh, Timmy, sorry, I think I missed it. How many sets would you do before pipe push it to pre exhaust triceps? Oh, uh, mate, yeah, try and error. Uh, I reckon I would probably go for at least two, but probably max out at three. I don't want to leave my shoulders with no help. Um, so I want to do like four or five sets, but go to try two for the first time, see how you're feeling, and do third if you feel like you've got it in you on, on a follow up subsequent session. Um, let me know how you get on with that one, mate, because I find I was flipping at brutal. He made me realize how much my triceps are actually doing pressing patterns. Um, so, Zahida, thank you, Tim. Um, really hard for me as a beginner, but taking away a lot from today's session. Four on push ups for me, two on knees to build it up, mate. Just start from the beginning. Um, you've just got to keep working on those strength progressions. We all started there, like right at the start. Um, don't get overwhelmed by where you can go. See that as an encouragement and go, well, this is where I'm at. And when I can do this, there's so much more fun stuff that I can go and play with. It's not like being able to do a shoulder press with six kilos and then just being able to do a shoulder press with eight kilos, which is the same thing and relatively boring. I used to do that, so I can say it. But um, yeah, the, the calisthenics, the pipe push, it's always going to give you some play uh, to move into. So see that as a real encouragement. Um, do we have an option to join the school and uh, have practical set practice every day? It's something we're talking about behind the scenes. Um, whether we do more lives when lockdown finishes, hopefully. Um, should be aiming for 90 degrees between legs and body that and the legs elevated like pipe push up. Ideally, it depends on what the rings is more difficult because they move. But if you're fixing on hands, the reality is what's going to happen when you go from your start position, try and aim for 90. When you drop into the triangle, the bottom shape, you're going to probably be less than your body's going to change slightly because we're not going straight down. We're actually moving forwards to the hands and pressing back out. The same thing happens in a, in a freestanding handstand push-up. You don't go straight up and down. You actually move from here, and then you kind of like, oh, my arms are bending that way. And you start vertical, and as I'm pressed down, I'm actually going to move into that shape, and I'm going to press back up. So working into that bottom shape there is going to be the bottom place of our handstand push-up. So you are fine to work in that. And think about a barbell perspective. We wouldn't lift a barbell like here, like through the head. It'd come down to that bottom position, and then it would drive back out. We don't work that kind of shape. So, yeah. Um, Venice, really interesting content. Great, thanks so much. Everyone's loving it. Good stuff. Um, right, guys, I'm glad there's been some useful information in there. Um, and I hope it's useful. So, you guys, thank you so much for joining me. We really do appreciate it. Um, I was waxing lyrical about bodyweight training and handstand push ups and watching me get burnt by the sun. So hopefully, you've not had to put sunglasses on because of my reflective glow through the monitor today. But um, have a great day, guys. Um, thank you for joining me. Go and get some boulders for shoulders and best part of calisthenics, I think, shoulder training, vertical push. Get good at it, and it'll get, it's going to open the doors to a lot of fun things that you can do. To building that stable capacity base of huge amount of strength means that your skills are going to become way, way easier and just can have more playtime. Guys, your legends, thank you very much. We're going to see you soon. All right, Instagram's out, YouTube, see you later.